please. Y'all, don't forget now, this is a good start for next Sunday night. This is a good start. Next Sunday night, our youth service will be here at 6 o'clock. Don't miss it. Bring all the teenagers you can, all you young people, bring your friends. I'm going to talk about the one world government, the mark of the beast, the one world monetary system. I used some of the stuff I did at the youth rally last year. And uh, so if if your family missed it, it'd be a good time to get them in on it. Get them in on it this next Sunday night. Talk to people at work. Just because it's a youth service don't mean it's not for adults. There's a lot of stuff in this going to be for adults. So don't miss next Sunday night, uh, uh, the 25th, February 25th. All right? Look at John chapter 11 tonight, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read you a verse of Scripture here. We're going to break in on the story of Martha and Mary when their brother Lazarus had died. And there's all kinds of sermons been preached on this. I've never heard what I'm going to do tonight. It jumped out at me and grabbed me the other day, and I wrote these thoughts down. John chapter number 11, and... Uh, uh, Lazarus uh, had died. Verse 14, Jesus told him Lazarus is dead. And uh, he he began to talk to him and uh, talk to him and he had been laid in the grave four days. And I want you to look at a verse of scripture here that uh, Mary, uh, Martha, I want to see here, made this statement. Martha, she said this, verse number 19, and many of the Jews came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. He he did, in the grave. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. Look at that. When Jesus was coming, she went and met him. That's what we're going to do one day. But Mary sat still in the house. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, If thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. So Mary here shows a remarkable perception and understanding of the power of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. She said, Lord, my brother's been dead four days. And if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. But I know even now, you can still fix this situation. You know that song they play on the radio when he, he's four days late and still on time or something like that? That's true. Uh, here's, but I want you to notice what Mary say, or Martha said here, and here's the thought of the message tonight. I'm going to be really brief, so I want you to listen carefully. John 11, 20, 20, uh, 20, 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, My brother had not died. The other day as I was reading that, that thought grabbed my heart. I wrote down these thoughts and I want to preach on, Lord, if thou hadst been here. Now according to the Bible this evening, Jesus never sank a ship. Paul was on one that sunk one time, but a ship never sunk with the Lord Jesus Christ on it. That's very telling. Jesus never wrecked a life, a car, a camel, or made a mess of any kind. And there's nobody in the Bible who ever died in his presence. Nobody died in the presence of Jesus Christ. So that's what made Martha say, Lord, if you'd have been here, he wouldn't have died. Think about that. No, you couldn't die around him. That's why those E.T. movies and them, them uh, alien, they, they imitate the Lord. You know, when E.T. walks in the room, the dead flowers start coming back and stuff like that. They try to make you think he has the power that the Lord has. No, he don't. When the Lord's in the room, the thing would have never willed it to start with. And that's a fake anyway. That old bug-eyed demon-looking thing they made uh, to, that people thought was cute. I, I'm telling you, that's the power of Hollywood right there. But anyway, our desire should be and privilege is, is to get the Lord in our home, in our church, in our life. There's, I've never heard of anybody who trusted the Lord too much. I've heard of people that didn't trust him enough, 
but I've never heard of anybody who trusted the Lord too much. I've never heard nobody say, man, I just trusted him too much. No, 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 no such thing as trusting him too much. So here's my thought tonight. And if you'll get this, I'll move right quickly through it. Here's my thought. Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. That's true in our home. If he's there, the home don't die. That's true of our church. If he's there, the church don't die. If that's true of anything in your life. If he's there, it don't die. It stays alive. Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to talk first of all about what she said about my brother. She said, my brother Lazarus, he's been dead four days. She said, we done buried him. He's done got the, the tomb clothes wrapped around him. He's dead and in the grave. And Lord, we're standing here crying. His funeral's done over. We've got company in the house. But Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother would not have died. I'm telling you this, this evening, folks, he, it's true. He never preached a funeral. The Lord deliberately didn't come so Lazarus could die and he could raise him to the dead and do the miracle. But the Lord never preached a funeral. A great preacher one time, they said he's going to preach a funeral and he said, well, I'm going to look in the Bible and see what Jesus did at funerals. He never preached one. He broke up several but he never preached a funeral. The Bible said one time there's a woman going to take her son to bury him and there's a, there's a big old line of, of camels down through there and all the family had on black. Camels had their headlights on. They had to go to the rural king and buy them, you know, where they could punch them on like that, run off batteries and they had them, uh, they had them battery headlights on them camels and there's all on there and in the, in the body, in the box here was her little son. And that little boy was laying in that box and is on their way to bury him like that. About that time, here come the preacher. They said, there's the preacher. It was Jesus. And the Lord reached over there like that, Bible said, and touched that bear, that box. B-I-E-R, the, the box. That's the casket. And when he touched that box, that lid flew open. Blam! And that little fella jumped up. And I'm telling you something, brother. That old boy driving that first camel like that had a heart attack. Uh, the, the one leading him swallowed his cigar. And they went back into the, he went back into the, uh, the office back then at the funeral home in Jerusalem and said, Myrtle, I told you, make sure they're dead from now on. Every time that one preacher preaches, we, we have to re, they repossess the casket and, and get their money back and everything else. I'm telling you, when he's around, nothing dies. Nothing dies when he's around. Nothing dies when he's around. My brother wouldn't have died. And you know what that gives me hope tonight? That gives me hope as long as I've got Jesus in my home, my home ain't going to die. Oh, I've got Jesus on them kids over there. They're not going to die. I'm talking about spiritually. Ladies and gentlemen, If you, listen, you mamas and daddies, let me give you a little hope. You say, well, I'm just scared, preacher. I'm afraid the devil's going to get my kids and all that. If he's there, he won't. If he's in your home, the devil ain't going to get your kids. I said if he's in the house, the devil ain't going to get your kids. Thank God in heaven tonight, ladies and gentlemen, if the Lord's in your home just right and the power of God's in your house, their kids won't die. Brother would not have died. G. Campbell Morgan said this. He was a great preacher. And he said, when I was a little kid, I went around preaching sermons to my little sister. He said, all my sermons are Bible stories I learned from my mother. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the power of a godly mother in the home. You see, if the Lord's there, the kids don't die. So if mama keeps Jesus in the home, it don't matter if daddy does or not. If there's a godly woman in that home, you watch the Lord save them kids. I've never seen it fail yet. I look around here tonight and I see people. I can use my own self for an example. You know, my mom stayed with God all them years and it was not easy on my mother. When we lived in Clinchville up there, when I was three, uh, until I was six years old. I think we was six when we moved to Nebo. And my mom walked to church and took me and my two sisters up to the little Methodist church up on top of the hill up there in Clinchfield. That was the only church we could walk to. And mom took us on Sunday. And I was in Sunday school class when I was four and five years old. I barely remember going in that little classroom and, and, and seeing in there. And mom held on, buddy. And she kept her faith in God. And then over the years when we moved to Nebo, we didn't have 
have a car in Clinchfield. Daddy walked across the, to the mill to work. Then Daddy got a car, and he stayed gone in it all the time. He was trading guns or dogs every Sunday. We didn't have no way to church. And Mom, you know what Mom done? Mom kept Jesus in our home. Are you listening to me, mamas? My mama kept Jesus in our home. He was there. My Lord said, my, uh, Mom said, Lord, if you're here, my kids won't die. My kids won't die as long as you're here. Nothing can't die when he's around. And I remember growing up, my mom sung that song, I was born to serve the Lord. And we strayed. And me and my sisters both strayed. And I got out in the sin. And I think, I look back now and I see all that stuff that happened. I was the only kid in the school in our, in our school that had been shot by a real gun. And uh, I'm people that say, man, that's the guy that got shot, man. That's the guy that got You've heard me tell about it. My, that boy I've run around with over there, he, he pulled out a little pistol out of a drawer like this and he pulled it out. We'd been camping the night before and I, was, I think I was 14 and uh, we was in his room, had no business. 14-year-old boys out by themselves have no business camping because they ain't just camping. Dumb mamas and daddies ought to have better sin. But I pulled the wool over mom's eyes and I said, I'm spending the night with David and we bring him and he reached in the drawer and he pulled that pistol out of that drawer of socks and his daddy had had it out the day before and shooting it. They usually didn't keep bullets in it. His daddy had had it out the day before, shot it twice and there's four in it. And that, he pulled that thing up at me and he pointed that thing right at my chest like that, about that far and pulled the trigger. And when he did that, I said, Man, get that thing away from me. He said, you want me to shoot you? I said, get that thing out of my face. And I put my hand like that and when I did, he pulled the trigger again and it went right through my hand. If he had pulled it right here, I, I would have been dead uh, at 14 years age, of age. Do you know why I don't think that happened? Because my mom, my mom kept Jesus in our home. My mom was praying for me. My, my, just like I was talking about this morning, you, you mamas want the Lord to protect your kids? Live right, serve God, do the right thing. And buddy, I'm telling you, you know the story, I went to the hospital and, and they, they, it, it, it was just a miracle. It didn't break no bones. It went right through there, got a little, little scar right there. And I had to hold it up like that and it swelled up. And I had to go around in a sling while because you hold it down and it swell up real bad. And uh, uh, they told the coach, said, you can't play ball. They said, you can't, doctor said, you can't play ball. And I talked the coach into letting me play. And uh, he said, all right, Danny, I'm not telling you that you, you can, okay? So if something happens, you ain't blaming me. So I got out there like a nut playing basketball like this, you know, and I'd done pretty good there for a while. About that time, somebody threw a pass and I went, before I thought. And that body, that thing felt like I got shot all over again. I thought I was going to die. And I mean, other things happened I, can't, I ain't going to go into tonight when I was 14, 15, 16, 17. And I look back now and I see some of the trouble some of them boys got into. And I look back. Do you ever do this? Do you ever look back on your life and it's almost like God had, even before you were saved? That's weird, isn't it? That's, I'm not saying he did because I, I don't know if I can prove that scripturally, but it's almost like God had his hand on me even when I was just a little kid and deep down inside I knew there's something else. I knew there's something more. I knew I wanted something more. I remember I got bored uh, when I was 18 and I, I thought, is this all there is to life? And that was God, the Holy Ghost, working on me and convicting me and he saved me by his grace and the Lord stayed in their home. I'm I'm telling you tonight, Daddy went, I ain't got time to get into all of that. I can see people in here tonight the same way. I'm, I'm Dana, Dana's sitting over there tonight. I don't I care, I, don't, I know Dana ain't been here in a while, but just seeing him made me think of his mom. How many of y'all remember Miss Mace, Miss Faye Mace? My, 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 what a soldier for God. Miss Mace had... 14 kids. Uh, I don't know how many of them there were. There's a bunch of them. Looked like 14. Uh, when, you, when you went over there, there's all around there. And I remember when Carrie was just started school at Maranatha Baptist Church and Christian School in Marion. And I'll never forget. I'll never forget, Carrie, you probably don't even remember this, Well, when she was like in the first grade, I would drive up there, and Miss Mace, his mother, had an old car. Lord, that old car, it was long from here to that wall over there. I forgot what the old brown thing, I forgot what it was, and I remember saying every day when I'd go up there, I'd see that her sitting in that car. And if I'd come and pick her up early, 
I'd see that woman sitting in that car. That was before I realized who it was. And I said, who is that lady? They said, that's Miss Mays. And she babysitted and raked and scraped and done everything in her power to put them kids in a Christian school. And I mean, she said, my kids are going to a Christian. I mean, you talk about a sacrifice. That woman, she sat there all day so she didn't have enough gas to drive all the way home and make another trip back, dropped them off at the Christian school, sat there all day long and waited on them kids to get out of school. You remember that, Dana? I, he was just a little, and I remember he had a bunch of brothers and sisters up through there like that, and there's a gang of them and I remember thinking Lord have mercy but I believe this evening I believe with all my heart Miss Mace went to heaven a few years ago and I just about guarantee you when it's all said and done and we're in heaven she'll count every one of them kids and say there they are they all made it through by the grace of God I'm telling you people a home can't die when Jesus is in it my brother wouldn't have died if you'd have been here, Lord. My brother wouldn't have died. Nobody ever dies in his presence. Number two, your marriage. Lord, if thou hadst been here, my marriage wouldn't have failed. And I'm going to tell you tonight, I believe that with all my heart. If both people in the marriage... I'm not fussing at you if you've been through divorce. You know I wouldn't do that. Sometimes you can't help it. I said if both, if both people, if both people say, Lord, I want you first in my life, I'm willing to do what the Bible said, that marriage can't die. That marriage can't die. I can't tell you the times. I can't even tell you the times that I've preached my heart out and the power of God fell in the church. I'd be some little mountain church somewhere and I'd be preaching and I'd scream and holler and you could feel the Lord move in the church and the power of the Holy Ghost got in there real thick and powerful. About that time there'd be a woman come over here and start bawling and hit the altar or maybe a man over there somewhere and when it was over, you know what they told me? They'd shake my hand and say, Preacher, thank you so much for that sermon. I was ready to hang it up. I was ready to leave my husband. I was ready to leave my wife and that sermon you know what I said? I said it can't die when he's around. It can't die when he's around. You said, well, mine's done death. You know what Martha said? Even now, God will give you what you ask for. Even if it's already dead. I've seen God put marriages back together after they've done shot, after they've done messed up. I, I've known people gotten, I wouldn't have given you a dime for their marriage. But they stayed in church and stayed with God and stayed right with God and it didn't die. Amen? Now, if one of them won't, you got problems. If one of them runs off, there ain't nothing you can do about it. But I'm telling you, she said, Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. Tell you what happened one night, without naming names, I was preaching in a church. I didn't know it, but the pastor and his wife were having serious marriage problems. I didn't know it. I knew something was wrong. And I had prayed and fasted before I went to this revival. And I got up and absolutely, I was wringing wet when I got through. I preached as hard as I could. And I preached on don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit, don't give up, don't quit. And the pastor had already decided that he was going to have to just, he's all going to bust up that night. And she, the pastor's wife come in and sat down in the back. He didn't even know she was there. And during the invitation, she come bawling down the aisle and got down on her knees and said she was willing to try it again. The pastor still didn't even know she was there. There was several hundred people there. And uh, 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 he got up and said, uh, I'm sorry, my marriage is busted up. Said, we, we can't live together. Uh, it's all busted up, you know, and everything. And I thought, no, 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 no. He didn't even know she'd been there and been to the altar. And I'm telling you tonight, uh, uh, you say, Brother Denny, what wound up happening? Sadly, it didn't work out. They did divorce, and that church busted it up and split and that's a sad thing but you know what the Lord was there that night willing and ready to save that marriage he was willing and ready to save that marriage how many times I don't know I've seen people come in the door without even speaking him sit over there she sat over here just like this and you could see the darts flying uh, between them Lord they're as mad 
enough to kill each other. They look at why did I even come to church? You hypocrite, who could live with you? You know, that type of attitude. You know what, nod your little heads at me. You know, you know what I'm talking about. And don't, don't sit there and look like you have no idea what I'm talking about, please. Okay, and uh, but I'm telling you, they, it was bad. And about that time, they'd been singing a song or Brother Jason didn't be up singing and, and boy, about that time, you see a big old tear run down one of them's face and about that time, and then about that time, they reach over and grab the other's hand and squeeze it and then bawl each other. Listen, I'm telling you, as long as he, you keep the Lord in your home, are you hearing me? You keep the Lord in your home. You read that Bible. You pray together. You keep your heart soft toward each other. Your marriage will not die. Won't die. Number three, and I'm through. My church. Lord, if thou hadst been here, my church wouldn't have died. I got good news for shining light tonight. As long as he is here, the church can't die. Now I'm going to speak tonight for a minute to all the pastors and preachers that are here this. When, when they'll hear this. No church ever died when the Lord was in there just right. It's impossible. Now, I'll be honest with you tonight. My heart goes out to thousands of preachers pastoring little, small country churches. My heart goes out to them. I know preachers that go to every Sunday and they got to 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, and, and they just feel like, and, and here's the problem. Here's the problem. You got these smooth, slick outfits that's got all kinds of money and can build a gymnasium and can build this and can build that. And here you got this little church struggling with 15 or 20 people and they think, Lord, and a lot of them think we're just out of business. Now, there's nothing wrong with building stuff for the kids. But I'm not saying anything's wrong with that. But the pressure is put on those little churches and preachers and pastors. Of those, I, and, and then they have a split and then somebody leaves. Can I say something to y'all tonight? Can I be real open with y'all tonight and tell you my heart? You don't know. You have no idea how it hurts a preacher when, when people quit the church. You don't know. You don't know how it hurts when you just lay out. But when you say, I'm, I'm going somewhere else, or you don't, and, and most of the time when people, people leave a church, they don't even have the decency, they don't have the, the maturity to set you down and talk to you. They just, you know, they're gone two months before you even realize, and you say, well, I've been going to another church. You don't know how it rips a preacher's heart out. It rips your church out. And I'm telling you, there's thousands of preachers all over this country getting their heart ripped out. Uh, their deacon quit, their Sunday school teacher quit, their choir leader quit, their, their piano player quit. Their, uh, their, their, their deacon, uh, somebody else quit. Their best man quit. Their, and they think, what am I going to do, Lord? What am I going to do? I'm going to say something to you preachers tonight. I'm going to say something tonight. As long as the Lord Jesus Christ is in the house, it ain't going to die. You might have had three splits last year, preacher. And the preachers will hear this on the radio and the internet. You might have split down so far you, you think you ain't going to make it. I tell you one thing, if he's still in that place, you're all right. I'd rather have 15 people where the Lord showed up once in a while than 5,000. There was a bunch of fake mess and a, and a talent show and a bunch of fake junk to try to make a bunch of people. I'm telling you, people, if you can, if you can sing your songs and substitute baby... For every time it says Jesus and it don't change the song, you got the wrong kind of music. And some of them songs, you could take out the word Lord and put out baby doll and it would sound exactly the same. It's sexual, it's fleshly, it's ungodly, it's not bringing forth to the Lord. And I'm gonna tell you tonight, as long as you've got the power of God and the old-fashioned Holy Ghost in your church, it ain't gonna die. Thank God, thank God. I'm telling you, once in a while, brother, when a breeze blows through here from another world, and you and you can tell it, can't you? It started getting like that this morning. It started getting good this morning in here. It just about got right in here a while ago. When that happens and the Holy Ghost comes through and starts breaking hearts, I'm telling you, as long as he's here, that church will not die. Church can't die with him in it. Can't, can't. If I fell over dead right here tonight, 
You say, oh no, the preacher, uh huh? As long as the Lord's here, you'll be all right. Something happens to me, you just keep him here. Keep him here. Pray until he shows up. I know people say, oh, that's just emotional. One person sees another person crying and they shout and they, huh, huh. I've seen, I stand up here. I stand up here and I have seen at the exact same second somebody break down over here and somebody break down over there and they can't even see each other and get right with God. That's not emotionalism. That's not as long as he's in your church, preacher, you'll be all right. You bow down on your knees. You may not have the nicest building in the world. You may not have all the trinkets. You may not have the nicest parking lot. You may not have the nicest facilities for the young people in big flashing lights and big screens and everything. But if he's in it, it'll make it. It ain't gonna die. I'll never forget. This happened to me a bunch of times. I was preaching revival way up in North Cove. Y'all know where North Cove is up by Marion. Long time ago. I haven't been preaching very long. And it snowed. And I mean tell you, it snowed all day long. And back then, you know, there wasn't no cell phones. There wasn't no way to find out if you called it off. You might call the preacher if he had a house phone. And... Uh, they said, you going? I said, sure, I'm going. I'm preaching revival. I think it's on Tuesday night. And I had a little Volkswagen, the little Volkswagen bug that I traded my daddy out of. Daddy. And you know, them things got the motor in the back. And them little old things really will go good in the snow. Because the weight's in the back. You can let the air out of the tire just a little bit. That thing will just squat down. Them little old Volkswagens just go right on. And I remember me and my cousin went. And it was snowing so hard, the windshield wipers, not, big old snowflakes that big around. And all the way up there, I thought, well, here you are, you're going to go out here and get killed and have a wreck, and there ain't going to be nobody there. And I, we drove, Joey, my cousin, y'all know Joey Beam, Joey went with me. And me and Joey drove up there, and we, we pulled into that church parking lot, and it was snowing. And I loved it. I mean, I loved to give him an excuse to get to drive in the snow. I figured, make up an excuse. Got to go get the store somewhere. Go, you know, slide around, do donuts in the parking lot. And we went around there a time or two, and I pulled in, and the pastor and about seven or eight people, maybe ten people total, was all that was there. And I'm telling you, people, they started singing, and the absolute power of God fell in that place. I never seen, that was one of the best services at that time I'd ever been in in my life. It, they shouted, we cried. God got so real in there. It got so thick. I mean, there wasn't 10 people there. And I learned a great lesson. I learned a great lesson there. Listen, the more the better. I hope we have a 1,000 next Sunday, really. I'm not against having a big, more the better. But I'm telling you something else. You don't have to have it. You get a bunch of people that's hungry. You get a, people, a bunch of people that love God and want God, he'll show up. And even now, whatsoever thou ask of God, even if it's done and died, he can still fix it. That's the good part. Even now, whatever you ask, Lord, he'll give it to you. Your church don't have to die. And I don't see ours dying at all. At all. Thank God. Thank God that we still got a place where we believe the right book, have the right spirit, and we know what real worship is. Lord, if you'd have been here, my brother wouldn't have died. But even now, whatever you ask of God, he'll give it to you. Maybe you're sitting here tonight and you say, Preacher, I'm, I'm dead. I've been dead four years. <laughs> maybe last last four months. You stinketh, maybe, spiritually. Maybe spiritually you stink tonight. I don't know. But even now, the Lord's still able to say, Roger, Come forth, you know. Yeah. Todd, come forth. Derek, come forth. You stinketh. <laughs> you know, old Lazarus come out of that grave like this, buddy, and they unwrapped him and let him go. Amen? Because when the Lord's there, you can't die and you can't stay dead when he shows up. Let's stand by his for prayer. Maybe y'all come sing one for us, Brother Jason, or whatever you want to do. 
every head bowed, every eye closed. Maybe you're here tonight. You say, Lord, I feel dead, but Lord, Thou hast been here. <clears throat> Can't die in His presence. Let's gather around the altar and pray tonight. Come on. Come on right now. Ma'am, Mama, Daddy. Amen. Come on, that's right. Others. Y'all go ahead. Man. You won't say, Father, help us tonight. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ladies, pray with me. Touch me again, Lord. Yeah. I Amen. Amen. 